Hey, this is Jono's World, conversation for everybody. Nice. Now, what, whenever, you said you were roof boating for a while, right? Yes, sir. What's, what's your closest call? And to, yeah, what's your closest thank you, time. Jesus moment? Oh, well, I wasn't on a roof boater. I was actually running the scope and almost died. Praise the Lord, you know, he kept me. But I was working over in Virginia. And uh, they were smothering out, you know, it was falling out. And we take this metal mesh, it's wire screen, and it's pretty darn heavy. And they told me to go get some and bring it up for the drills so they could, you know, put it up with their roof boats to keep the little stuff from falling. And uh, I went to get it, and I pulled my scoop up, you know, a foot or two away from it, and uh, went in between it. And when I did, it came over on me. And they estimated it weighing like a thousand pounds. Yeah. Just praise Jesus. You know, it came and got me. It threw out, it destroyed a disc in my back. It pretty much killed the nerves in my thighs. It destroyed all kinds of ligaments in my tailbone. But man, you talk about, that's the first time I've ever prayed like I was going home. I mean, yeah. I prayed like, this is my last breath, you know, I'm going out of here because I wear a cordless head and it had fell on the ground. I, you know, and people don't understand how dark it is without a light under there. Like you can turn your light off and smack yourself in the face and never see it coming. <coughs> and, uh, you know, my light fell off. I'm sitting there in the dark and that stuff slowly, you know, bringing its weight down onto me. And I was lucky we were little trackers and textures, different minds have different right. ones. And mine, the one I had at the time, if you press all three buttons and hold them, it'll send an alarm outside and it'll tell them that you're in trouble and you need help. SOS signal. Yeah, so I was just blessed enough to barely reach my arm down there and hit that. And now, I was they... sitting there in the pitch dark trying to throw one piece at a time off of me uh, and, you know, squalling for help and praying with everything I had, you know, just fight or flight, you know, you're going to fight the survivor, you're going to die. Now, you and, probably uh, did. Did you feel the pain or at that moment, or was it just adrenaline? Get, just I was getting, adrenaline. You didn't realize you were hurt until later? Oh, I knew I was hurt. Okay. Uh, I knew I needed to live, too. Yeah. So, now, you know, you. and I was sitting there squalling for help, and... Finally, the boss, you know, they called up there and told him that, because a lot of people set those off on accident, but they finally called up there and they was like, you know, Josh sent out a signal. They was like, you need to check on him because anytime somebody accidentally sets that off, you still got to put, the foreman has got to put eyes on that person and make sure they're all right. Then they can call all out right. and say, oh, he accidentally hit it or, you know, get help. But he come down there and there I was stuck. And by that time, man, it had set down so much on me, I was fighting for every breath I could get. And I was like, man, pull the scoop forward, pull the scoop. He's like, no, I don't want to hurt you. I said, pull the scoop forward. I'm not going to live long enough for you to throw all this off of me, which I don't know if I would have or not. You know, That's I was how it felt. in a state of shock. Mm -hmm. And uh, he starts throwing it all off. I mean, uh, he gets in the scoop and pulls it forward, and I just collapse. I can't walk. Can't feel my legs whatsoever. And they get me, and they're like, here, man, try to stand up. So I try to stand up. Boom, they have to catch me. You know, my legs are just gone. I don't know what. I don't know if I'm crippled at that time or what. And they're like, here, we're going to get you on the backboard. I was like, no, nah, man, don't put me on no backboard. I said, you put me on the backboard, I'll never come back in. I said, just take me out. And it's like, here, sit in the man trip. And that's whenever I figured out that my tailbone was. They was like, here, just sit down and drink this water on the way. I was like, no, man, I can't sit down. I was like, just let me lay down. And I got out there, and, you know, everybody else, I was like, oh, God, is he dead? You know, because I was laying down on my stomach going out. And if you're hurt, protocols to put you on a backboard, but I kept refusing it because, you know, I just didn't yeah. want that. I didn't, because, you know, they put you on the backboard, they strap you down, put the neck mm. brace on you, and, you know, probably cut you stuff off of you. And, you know, a belt, $150, just had to buy a new one. 
and stuff like that, you know. Boy, don't you cut those boots. Off. Don't you dare cut those boots off my foot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we got out there, man, and they uh, called my wife. They're like, don't panic, but we just took your husband to the uh, Clintwood Memorial Hospital by ambulance. Uh, he's all right, but you probably need to get down there. And they get down there, and I still can't walk. And that safety man, you know, that company was pretty big. I'm not going to say their name, which everybody's going to know who it is who sees this that's from around here anyway. But that yeah. safety man was in there, and, you know, he is questioning me and all this. He's got to be there, and he's got to tell them to drug test me and all that, you know. So that way, if I feel if they can, you know, just say you're on your own. But anyway, they get me there, and. That woman comes in, she's like, are you all right and all this? And asked me about it. She's like, I know you're in pain, so we're going to give you this medicine, you know, to help with it. I didn't take anything or nothing like that. So I was like, well, okay. And uh, they give it to me. And about 10 minutes later, it starts kicking in. You know, I start feeling all funny head. And that safety man's like, is that medicine working on you? I was like, yeah. You want to answer some questions now? Oh, man, get out of here. I ain't talking about that right now. I was like, I probably couldn't even remember what happened right now. And then my wife and dad get there, and they leave the room, and he leaves and stuff, you know. And small they were trying to get like you. That, yeah, they have doctors in their pockets, you know. Like, you walk into this one, the hospital they sent me to that their comp doctors work in. It has a big sign that this wing is bought by blank and blank coal mining. So I knew I was in trouble there. But they sent me back to work that day. They said, you're on light duty. You can't uh, do nothing but sit. But we're sending you back to work, so we ain't got to pay. They didn't say that. That's what it was. We're sending you back to work, so we ain't got to pay comp. Right. Okay, so I go back to work, and they're just constantly calling me up there to the office like, trying to get me to change my story, trying to, you know, just anything to make them not liable. And then finally, they just harassed me. So, like, two or three days later, they brought me up there and wrote me up twice because of something that happened in the accident. I mean, you know, they was going to get rid of me just as soon as the doctor cleared me. So I was like, man, I quit. I said, there ain't no sense in this. I said, y'all harassed me. I had to go get a lawyer and everything. Jeez. Yeah, but you know, praise Jesus, I'm still alive. But oh yeah, whenever I got outside and uh, you know they sent me back to work on light duty, their first words wasn't "How you feeling? You all right? How are you still alive?" Yeah, how are you still alive? But uh, by the way, come change your stories, or we don't have to pay you. Yeah. <laughs> so we can go ahead and fire you. You know. Yeah. And now we're going to harass you because you got hurt. Mm -hmm. it, that's that's the workforce. I mean, that is, that's not just, you know, with these coal mines. Like, that's, that's, that's every small town in not just Appalachia. That's every small town in America. If yeah. there is a factory or a big business, they're going to run, the hospital runs through them. Um, and hey, this is Jono's World, conversation for everybody.